we kind of will present uh, basically in two parts. I will start and Errol will end up our presentation. Uh, just to make sure everything is uh, clear, uh, I'm presenting as a uh, resource expert, not as an RC person. Just uh, we are presenting cow model. Uh, okay, uh, our model was. Uh, yes, I have. Okay, I don't know. I don't have these questions, but. Uh, anyway, uh, our model is different uh, and it's developed uh, outside of NGA project uh, and this is why kind of I will uh, spend a couple of minutes to explain the model. The difference, basically main difference is that uh, our PGA model is uh, structured uh, as a, a bunch of filters and each filter uh, represents certain uh, physical phenomena. For example, number one is uh, magnitude scaling, core attenuation is uh, uh, another function, an elastic attenuation, side correction, and basin effect. That's what we have now in our PGA model. And uh, uh, again, um, uh, the difference is, as you can see, that uh, PGA is a multiplication of filters. In log space, it is uh, a summation. Uh, this model was first developed in 2007, published in 2007, and extended to SA in 2009. Uh, after that, uh, recently we updated this model. This is why kind of it's called updated Greiser Kalkin model or GK13. Uh, now, speaking about spectral acceleration, spectral acceleration. Uh, is a function. That's another difference from standard models. Uh, we approximate um, SA as a function, sp spectral shape as a function, and it's smooth function. Right now it's uh, mm, tested up to 10 seconds, but basically in principle you can extend it to longer periods. Of course it's not constrained at longer periods. And uh, it's structured in a way that it's anchored uh, to PGA. That's kind of basics of the model. Now I will go to uh, the questions. Uh, I'm sorry, I will answer these questions probably in different order. But uh, anyway, I try to work on this. Uh, OK, uh, main question uh, um, that we have is that our model has a bump, uh, at least for magnitude from about 6 to 7. Uh, and uh, what this means? It means in plain and simple English that uh, maximum, uh, maximum ground motion may be observed not necessarily at the closest distance to the fault, but at certain distance. I will come to the speculations how we explain this, but let's start with real data. As far as I know, uh, there are four well-recorded uh, in the near field earthquakes uh, in California. Parkfield, Imperial Valley, Northridge, and Loma Prieta. Now, if you really look at uh, uh, how well they are recorded, uh, I would say that only two of them, Parkfield and Imperial Valley, are really well recorded in the near field. Uh, at the full distance of less than five kilometers, there are only uh, there are zero stations for Northridge, and there are only two stations for Loma Prieta. And for distances of up to 10 kilometers, again, same picture, very many records from Parkfield, re relatively many from Imperial Valley, and much less for uh, Northridge and Loma Prieta. Now, let's look at these first two. Do they have a bump at certain distance? I would say yes. We, we are saying yes. Now, it, of course, it can be a matter of interpretation, but clearly there are some uh, uh, increase in amplitudes at certain distance, and this uh, bump is actually magnitude dependent. Basically, the bigger is magnitude, the farther is this uh, corner uh, period, which is uh, another difference in our model. Basically, our model uh, 
uh, uh, we, we try to be as physical as possible. This is why this flat area, at least, is proportional uh, to magnitude. And the larger is the magnitude, the farther is this uh, corner distance or slope. Now, these are two well-recorded earthquakes, Imperial Valley and Parkfield. Now, let's go to the two others, which are not as well recorded, but also more or less okay recorded. I would not say that they confirm the bump, but they de definitely don't uh, eliminate the idea of bump. Uh, now, that is, that's a summary. How many out of these four well recorded earthquakes demonstrate bump? Two out of four. That's our op opinion. How many are not conclusive? Another two. Now, uh, I've been asked many times about uh, how we explain this bump. And uh, here come, in a way, certain speculations. Uh, first, uh, recently we found uh, similar results in a publication in BSSA. Oh, sorry. Uh, it is uh, Chapman and Goodby, BSSA 2012. They also uh, demonstrated bump or amplification of ground motion at certain distance from the fault, not exactly on the fault. And uh, they, their explanation, it's a quote from them, I don't have to do anything with this. This is uh, because of wave propagation through a one-dimensional layered Earth model. That come, uh, comes from Martin Chapman. Now, in real life, in their case, these are uh, um, ground motion simulations, uh, similar to what we saw yesterday. Um, but in uh, real life, uh, I would speculate that, uh, of course, this is the first effect that they presented. <coughs> it can be also directivity. It can be also partially nonlinear behavior of media in the near source area. And another very important factor is our way, common way of measuring distance. We are measuring distance closest to the fault. I don't recall who uh, 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 earlier suggested, maybe it was you can, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, somebody suggested to use not the closest distance to the fault, but uh, distance to the biggest or most important uh, uh, asperity. I would su suspect that if we will start measuring distance from the uh, uh, strongest asperity uh, or strongest part of the fault, the bump may go away. Basically, I think it's a combination of all these effects. That's my answer to the probably main question that I have m many times from audience. Uh, now, style of faulting. Honestly, we did very simple work. We used uh, basically same as uh, publication of Sadi et al. 97, where they took uh, factor as one for strike slip, 28% uh, higher for, um, uh, for, for deep slips, and we used F uh, 114, basically half and half for mixed events. Now, for normal faulting, we, don't, we didn't have any constraints. Because, uh, this is why we just stayed with same number one. We treat normal faults as uh, uh, same as strike slips. Now, uh, in support of this, we actually looked at the data and uh, uh, we didn't see any real uh, problems with uh, this more or less simple interpretation. Uh, now, ZTOR. OK. Um, I have to go back and probably read the l l last phrase. Our modeling f philosophy is to avoid any independent parameters, the, the thing that Ralph was mentioning, which are not present in the catalogs, which cannot be easily determined by shake maps or engineers who work with those models. Uh, and, okay, now 
my experience when I looked at this uh, information, I really uh, find that it is it, it, it is very difficult to constrain ZTOR from my experience. From this point of view, uh, I would say that I, I like the idea of uh, uh, of uh, depths to uh, hypercenter depths. Thank you. Just had some blockage in my mind. Thank you. Hypercenter depths. But okay. Uh, to make it plain and simple, no, we didn't use it. But, okay, the important factor, uh, in, in a way, uh, there is a correlation between uh, dip slips or reverse folds and uh, ZTOR. Basically, uh, from my experience, well, almost all uh, reverse folds are relatively deep relative to strike slip. And uh, this is why kind of this factor of uh, 1.28 for reverse fold relative to 1.0 uh, is partially taken care of uh, the depths to uh, the rupture, to the surface to the rupture. Uh, now, uh, hanging wall effect. I'm sorry, uh, and uh, I have to say this, we were not allowed to participate in NJOS2, and we were not given access to NJ West uh, database and information at the time when it was developed. I specifically asked a few times and uh, I was told no, no other participants except whatever was decided before. This is why kind of, I don't know what is the latest funding, uh, finding, but previously I tested two, actually I tested two models uh, and I can remind you that I was uh, an official reviewer from CGS when I worked in California. And I have to say that Abrahamson and Silva model and Chu and Yang model with their hanging wall effect of 2008 pr produced sometimes unreliable results. I specifically, what I mean unreliable, I took uh, all these models and I put <coughs> Uh, uh, different solutions, fault plane solutions published in, uh, by seismologists. And uh, I have it in my paper. And I, uh, there are five different solutions. And depending upon which solution you put, you can have variation of PGA for U2 models 2008 from 0.2G to 0.6G in the near field. Uh, now, don't want to judge anybody, but from my experience, previous experience, uh, I was not really satisfied with hanging wall effect. And uh, I can only say when I will see testing of the new hanging wall effect, uh, we will be happy to try it uh, because in our filter-based approach, it's pretty simple. We just multiply for, by another filter. Uh, as soon as community will agree on this hanging wall effect, we will be happy to implement it. Of course, in this case, we will need to rerun everything because it may affect residuals and everything else. Uh, okay, constraint for magnitude seven, eight. These are earthquakes which helped us to constrain between magnitude seven and eight. And of course, uh, Denali is not as good as Chichi. But basically, these are earthquakes that uh, we use to constrain our magnitude scaling. Uh, uh, it may be far from perfect at uh, magnitude uh, close to it. I think our question here is, uh, did you apply any other constraint on how it scaled other than um, an empirical, you know, fitting these earthquakes? Did you say it must be, it must increase with magnitude, it oh. must do something like that? Oh, okay, okay, uh, yes, uh, if, yes, uh, we actually agreed, or we stayed with the idea that we heard uh, at previous NJ models uh, that there is a magnitude saturation. And basically, I just made the comparison to the plot that uh, uh, Yusuf was showing how uh, our model behaved uh, uh, at 30 kilometers uh, from the fault uh, and it's, it's pretty similar to what you guys are having. It's a little bit lower at magnitude 8, but it's very close at 5, 6, and uh, 
start deviating slightly lower at magnitude 8. That's, the, uh, that's how it, it, it really worked. Did I answer? Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, now, uh, at this point, I will pass uh, the microphone probably to Errol. Uh, we were uh, s uh, strongly criticized by our use of, um, uh, of uh, uh, standard deviation. Basically, to, uh, in our model, it's very simple. It is uh, simply uh, period dependent, and uh, there is no difference uh, we didn't de differentiate be between uh, different inter and intra event uh, residuals, but uh, listening to this criticism, Errol did a lot of uh, work. And can you please come here? But, so, so the discussion is after Errol. Yeah, le but let's no, let's. No. Yeah, but let's do no, a little no, bit. Discussion of the whole thing about no, about um, after. Before well, you after. sit down, let's cover some of the topics that you just. Yes, That's sure. That's what you want, right? Okay, okay. No, so no. let's, can we go back a couple on, um, you, you've got two issues of, uh, let's even go to hanging wall. So yes. you're, you're using R rupture as your distance metric. Correct. Right? So you say hanging wall effect isn't considered in the BSSA model, that's because they use the joiner board distance metric, which okay. already has it, right? It's, it's very similar to the hanging wall effects that are put into the rupture the R rupture models, um, but uh, so th th I think you do want to look at or get your residuals plotted over the hanging wall, you know, with those sites and see what you what the results are, because the numerical simulations are pretty robust in saying there's a big difference between the foot wall and the hanging wall. Oh, okay. Please understand me correctly. In no way I'm saying there is no difference. I'm saying I don't didn't see yet. Uh, the model, which kind of mm, well discussed and well tested, that's that's what I'm saying. It, it doesn't I, I, mean it doesn't exist. Yeah, I'm I think saying I didn't see at the at the, at the time. The uh, 08 models. This was one of our biggest uncertainties, or, or uh, is is trying to produce the hanging wall effects because they were. I agree, they were highly very high, large differences. Yes. Um, but that told us we didn't know very well or didn't have a good constraint on what was happening. I, okay, please understand me correctly. In no way I want to criticize anybody. This, the whole purpose of this was to say that at the moment of creating this model, uh, we didn't see anything uh, which uh, satisfied our criteria of but robustness. You can criticize us. That's fine. That's fine. Okay, we can. I can. <laughs> But, but the purpose of this was that sure. simply at the time of creation of the model, there was no uh, such model available, or at, at least known to us. Yusef, you had a question? Third bullet. You know yes. that the database is public since May. You can download it, whatever we use to develop GMPs, right? So there's nothing secret about these things. In fact, I really, truly believe on the face of the earth if there is only one open uh, database is this, because we are not hiding anything. So you have the database. Okay, uh, let, let, let me. I let have a question. Okay, okay, Errol, I'll answer this question. I specifically asked you in November, and this uh, question was asked to you and you told me that uh, the database is not available and data are not available. Did I give you a reason? Yes. What was the it? reason was that it is not well constrained. Well, t t I'm, I'm not. Yusuf, please, let, let's stay away from. I'm ex explaining why NJ West 2 basically didn't come through our attention. Because at the time of creation of this model, it was not available to us. It, it was made available on, on May 15th, if I'm right. And it's, it was much later than all testing was done. Now we are planning to look, uh, to look at this. But you understand that looking at this means that we have to rerun everything. That, that's why, uh, basically, if we will start rerunning everything now, 
I'm explaining. I'm explaining. I'm not attacking you. Please understand. Vladimir, I'm sorry. May I ask you a favor? We're running very late, oh, uh, and Please I would I... like to to re-steer the discussions towards the goal of our workshop. So it's very critical for us to be able to capture the perspectives of of the speakers that are invited to these uh, sessions. So if we can move forward, please, sure. with the technical discussions, that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah. And then on a separate basis, uh, you can keep talking yeah. about the issues that you raised. I'm, I'm sorry for stepping in. I'm going to wrap up um, very quickly. Actually, what, I, what we did is, um, through the whole irrigation, you know, we did multi-stage irrigation using nonlinear optimization and come up with the total, you know, total sigma and total residuals. And then after we use mixed effect analysis, um, basically maximum likelihood, uh, mixed effect approach, uh, uh, you know, the pulse predict was, you know, kindly provided all his codes. So we generated all the intra and inter event residuals. And then after we beamed them, um, and then in, in the next slides, uh, we're going to show us, you know, all the beams values, their standard, you know, the deviations, as well as our, you know, the trend lines. And we checked the periods, you know, starting from PGA. Um, so I'm going to show all the, you know, representative results next in the slides. So we didn't, our model basically showed no bias against the event terms, uh, as well as any independent estimation parameters, magnitude, you know, distance, uh, VS30 and C1.5 that we used, okay? So these are the inter-event residual terms. Um, so in, <clears throat> okay, in, in each plot, um, so basically we are showing the beams, uh, the black lines are the, uh, the mean values and the standard deviations are shown by the red vertical lines. Um, so the total residuals here, you know, PGA, um, <clears throat> and against the distance, as well as on the right side for the uh, VS30. Uh, so the bottom plot is the intra-event residuals. Um, you know, it's difficult to see, but we have this, you know, the trend line going, um, it's a dash uh, red line. Uh, so we fit a uh, linear, linear square fit. Uh, so basically the slope of our trend line is, you know, practically zero. So we don't, we don't show any, any bias in terms of distance as well as the VS story. So this is our whole database. It's about uh, 2,500 data points. Um, so this is for the Z1.5. Um, you know, again, um, our model is, you know, the fitting very well to the data. Um, so our, you know, the slope for the intra event residual is almost zero. <coughs> So when we look at the uh, event terms, inter-event residuals, um, so we have about, you know, the 40 earthquakes here. Uh, so we have the PGA, SA 8.2 second, uh, as well as the specular acceleration at one second. Um, again, the, the red dashed line shows the, uh, you know, the hour trend. Um, again, the slope is, you know, it's very close to zero. You know, practically, um, we don't have any, any bias in any of these. Um, <coughs> event term as well as the intra event terms. Um, so we, we are we're about to finish our open file report. Um, so we're going to provide all these, you know, the figures and as well as the other, other periods. Um, so this information is going to be available, you know, um, like publicly soon. Um, so in summary, just to wrap up our uh, presentation that Vladimir started. So our ground motion prediction equation can be adjusted to other regions. Um, we have now included um, Q factor uh, to compensate that. So our model is uh, not, you know, multi pages long equations. Um, they are very simple. Our specular acceleration is a function of specular period, so it's a smooth function. So we didn't um, we didn't do any smoothing on any of our coefficients. So it has a uh, very minimum number of you know uh, coefficients as well as the independent parameters to be used. Uh, um, and so we, we did the residual analysis to come up with, you know, all the intra-event, inter -event terms. Uh, and then we use the mixed effect approach to um, show that our model is unbiased. So that's top of my presentation. <coughs> so uh, is it possible for us then to get the intra event uh, or sure. your estimates of tau and phi then from those residuals? Yeah, we, we're gonna, yeah, we can provide that. Okay, great, thanks. That was the Sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah.
Doug Drager. Um, yesterday we saw some examples looking at the hanging wall. Um, and <clears throat> my recollection was that uh, the curves from your method had a broader plateau. And, and so what I was wondering is if, if that is something that just, it comes about from this distance dependent bump that you have. Yeah. I didn't catch whether it was symmetric or not. It probably was. That, that's, okay. It should, it should be. Uh, it, it is possible it's coming from the bump because the bump is distance dependent and magnitude dependent. Basically, the bump, uh, the bigger, the larger is the magnitude, the, uh, the, uh, the lower is corner frequency. The, the lo longer is the period. Basically, um, uh, <coughs> I'm um, misspeaking. Basically, the, 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 the lar larger is the magnitude, the, the bigger is the uh, area in which there is no uh, attenuation. Basically, the flat period. Uh, that's, that's, that's the point. This is why probably you see this effect in our model. Right. That's part of what our hanging wall model does, is it flattens it out over the beginning part. So some of those things might trade off uh, in, in there. As That's well. possible, because, because again, uh, our experience, for example, uh, depth to the uh, URZ tour uh, is in a way related to... Uh, style of faulting. Style yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. It's, we, it's, we have no style of faulting factor for reverse anymore oh. because it's accommodated by the depth term, and those things trade off completely. Exactly, and I, I don't recall exactly which model uh, I looked at the previous models. You're right, it, it is much less difference. Yes, yes, it's a trade-off. But again, uh, our logic was to make this model uh, usable for, by engineers. They don't have to uh, search or look for help from seismologists. Let's put this way. Okay, let's move okay. on. Thank you. Uh, Sanan is next. 